Today I'm going to be doing a colored pencil tutorial using the new powder blender for the Surreal Orca painting. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I knew I loved the powder blender after I did my initial review. If you missed out on that, I'll have a card pop up here so it'll go over what this is a little bit more thoroughly. And I suspected after that first time of playing with it that that blender was going to open a lot of doors on different techniques and different things that we can achieve in colored pencil a lot more easily than the way I've traditionally blended with it. So I tried something totally different. I was actually really pretty sure I was going to fail on this and have to start over again. I worked on Fisher 400 sanded paper. I used Polychromos and Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor colored pencils. I found that I do not like wax-based pencils with the powder blender at all. Prismacolor, Luminance, Derwent Drawing, Chinese White. I won't bother with those again. I just do not like them with this, but the oil-based pencils, oh my gosh, they blend so nicely. If I stick to the oil-based pencils, this product is wonderful. Now the powder blender is currently only available within the US. They are working to get it available to everyone else, but just the way that laws work and all of that, it's really challenging. Actually, the powder blender can be sent. It's expensive with, for shipping, but it's the texture fixative that we spray that goes along with it that can't be sent overseas because it's in an aerosol can. So just so you guys know, they are working on making that available to everybody, but it's a big process. But for those of you within the US who want to pick up this product, there is a link below to the website where you can purchase this. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you guys now, so make sure to head over and check that out. So let's go ahead and take a look at this tutorial. Now remember with this product, you either want to use sanded paper or gessoed paper. Don't use your regular paper, it will not work. So I'm using sanded paper here and I'm sketching in my background. Notice how I'm leaving all my pencil lines in there. This is really sketchy, but all of it is going to blend out once I go through with the powder blender. So I'm using oranges and pinks, then blending out into this deeper magenta color. I'm lining my subjects first so that I don't go crazy and get the magenta where I don't want it, which if I did, it's not a huge deal because with this product, you're able to layer on top of layer and get full coverage, more like if you were painting. With colored pencil, if you get something in the wrong area, it's hard to fix it. But here with this, with, between the texture fixative and the powder blender, just how this works, really not that big of a problem. But I'm still outlining everything to make my job easier. Again, look at all of those sketchy, sketchy lines. Normally, that would look absolutely terrible. Now this feels to me a lot more like working with pastels, the way that you can get the soft blending and how quickly this lays down, but it's not quite as messy and you don't end up with that dry chalky feel on your hands. And for someone like me who's really freaked out by that, this is amazing because it lets me get some of the results from pastels because I did like the results that pastels give. I just don't like how they feel. With this, I can get those results and feel like I'm working more in pastels without the mess. Now, I will say this is a little bit messier than working with colored pencils by themselves normally. You do have more of the pencil fall off or more of the product fall off. So you do wanna put something under your piece as you're working. I wouldn't do this over white carpet, for example. So I'm just blocking all of this in here, working off camera, that's impressive. You can see I've just layered a little bit from color to color where it fades from one to the next. Now I'm gonna take this dark bluish purple color and go over both the black and the purple. I don't wanna leave the black solid black. It'll look really flat if I do that. But by putting the black down first and then the dark color over it, it lets this stay very dark without being completely flat. Now, some of you guys had recommended trying out the Pan Pastel Blender for this product. And oh, I love you for that suggestion. It works so well. I have it here. I just didn't think to try it on the last one. Blending went so much faster. When I tried blending with the little sponges that the kit came with, it had taken a very long time. So something this size, having something that made it blend faster was even better really worked well. You just want to keep a really light hand with it because with working on sanded paper, you will burn through, burn little holes into these blending pads or sponges. Now, I don't need this to be perfectly smooth because I'm going to add texture on top of it anyway. You can smooth it out more than what I've got here, but for my project, that was not necessary. I'm pulling a little bit of the darks into the lighter areas just to get some variation in those colors. 
Now this next part is something that I was so excited about. The powder blender allows you to erase the colored pencil completely. Unless you've sprayed the texture fixative, then it's not erasing. But before that, you can erase anything. So I'm using the stencil that I use when I create space scenes with airbrushing and some poster putty, and I'm lifting off this pattern to get my space background. This isn't something that you could even dream of doing with colored pencil before. So that, this I was absolutely thrilled with. And I ended up adding texture all over my entire piece, really focusing more on that magenta orange section and then fading out to the darker purples and blacks. I am going to soften the areas over the purples and blacks later, but for now we'll just leave that be. Now I'm going to add my base layer onto the earth. I've not sprayed the texture fixative yet. I just wanna get a base coat onto everything. So I'm using a couple of different shades of gray greens. I've got that gold color, two different shades of browns, a cream color, and about three or four different shades of blue that I'm using to create this. And the reason I'm listing those colors, well, I'm not actually listing the colors, but I'm mentioning how many colors, not so that you use the same exact colors I did. That's not really important. The point is that I'm using various colors. I'm not just doing flat green everywhere because it would look flat. Get a little bit of detail in there with using some of these different colors. Now, I lost the clip where I blended out the water, but you get the general idea there on the earth. It was done the same way as everywhere else. I just sketched it in and I used a small blending sp sponge to blend out the water. Now, onto the whales. Notice wherever they're going to be white, I've not drawn it in with white. I've used the pinks and magentas from the backgrounds because white is very reflective. You don't want to leave things flat, solid white, or it will look very flat. So I drew out the white areas first, which are really pink, and then I went over with the black and blue for the whales. I've added some magenta into the black as well, which gives you just a nice deeper color. Now at this point, it's going to look very flat, almost velvety, which is not the look you really want for whale skin, but it's my base coat. After this, I am going to spray the texture fixative over it, let it dry, and now I'm coming on top of this with the, the brighter blue. You can see it just makes the color so much more bold, and it's something that you're not going to see as much here or even as much on camera from the preview clip of this, but when you look at it in daylight oh my gosh it just glows having the layers like this it w ended up looking a little bit more like what i would expect from an oil painting where the color refracts through each of the layers i was really surprised at the difference of what this looked like under my studio or my easel lamp versus what it looked like in daylight huge difference and you'll see that at the very end here it almost glows it's not from photoshop that it glows like that that's really what it looks like in certain lights so moving on to the earth, this is where I decided, you know what, I'm not even gonna mess with wax-based pencils with this anymore. You can see this, I'm using the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. It's gritty, it's grainy, it doesn't blend really well, not like the Polychromos do. And then the funny thing, I am not a huge fan of the Polychromos White. It worked beautiful for this. Look how opaque that is. So I'm sketching the white over the earth. Again, not something I would typically do with colored pencil. I would have left the areas I wanted white, white. And then I'm going in between some of these clouds, darkening this up. I'm just gonna keep layering and layering until I get the detail where I want here. And that's the great thing here. You are so unlimited as to how many layers you can do, which again, not tr typical for how we've worked in colored pencil in the past. So I'm going to add more and more of these little white bits. Notice that I've got these clouds slightly curved so that my earth doesn't look flat. Blending some of them out with the powder blender, and then some of them I'm leaving more harsh. I don't want to overblend everything. Now, that bit of light coming from behind the earth, I ended up blending that out or trying to cover it as much as possible with asteroids and other things. It just did not come out right. And I learned my lesson no more wax based pencils when I'm trying to blend with this. You can use your wax based pencils with this, but use them for your final layers, your more opaque layers, things that you don't need to blend out. So all of the white on here that I liked the results from came from my polychromos white, which still kind of shocks me and also makes me really happy because I bought a lot of them when I first got these pencils thinking I would go through the white like crazy like I had with my Prismacolors before and I haven't used them almost at all. So now I have a use for them. So now I'm blending that brighter blue color that I used on my background into the whales more and more on my background. 
I'm also using that blue on the bottom left hand corner of the earth so it ends up with that glow which you can't really see because I'm working off the camera there. I'm sketching in my asteroids. I'm going to use a dark gray, I'll come back through later with that, to sketch in the details there. Now notice on my whales, I've got them where they fade from that lighter blue color and now I'm coming on top with the black, making it really, really deep. This helps them to look shiny. I don't want it to look too grayish because it makes them look very dull. But by getting portions of this to be really bold, very black, look how shiny they look now. So here's that gray I was talking about for the asteroids. And I'm leaving little bits of the background showing through, which gives me a lot of my mid-tones all at once. Once that's in, I can come back through with black to darken up even more of this area. Not all of it. I want to let some of the gray show through as well. Sharpening the black on my whales. Blending that out just a bit on the asteroids and then coming back through with that white polychromos for highlights. I still can't get over how well that shows up. For the rays of light on the whales, it's the same thing. It shows up so well. A little bit more detail on the earth there. Now for the stars, you want to do this in dots, but not just polka dots everywhere. Think in terms of clumps and clusters for getting stars. If you just do random dots everywhere, it will not look right. It won't look natural. I want to do a whole bunch of clumps and clusters, and some of them are going to be done with white. Some of them are going to be done with a light blue so that the light blue ones feel like they're farther away. Putting a bunch of those in there. Adding some dots on the whales to make them look shinier, giving that sparkle. So here you can see what I was talking about where the color, when I took the photo in the daylight, how bright it is. The light was really refracting through all of these layers, very much like how I see happen with oil paintings, where there's just so many layers and the light shines through. And that's not something I've ever noticed on my previous colored pencil work. So it'll be interesting to see, was it just the shade of blue that I used was that vivid? Or is it more working with the powder blender and how we layer causing this kind of glow that we get with oil paintings? So that is something we will look for the next time I use this product. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now. So make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs every Saturday. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Two days and then like another half an hour after that of messing around with it. Two days to get this much work done is just mind-blowing to me. How not something I expected with colored pencil.